That's gonna be bulbous. Main objective, achieve bulbous tail. Chelsea went to the P.O. box for me a couple days ago and she had to carry out this enormous box, super heavy with both kids with her. It's like an impossible task for her, but she did it. And what was in that box? This scroll saw. Thank you, Blake. Oh my goodness, what the heck? You bought me a scroll saw. I've never used it. It's got a foot pedal. Let's see. I'm gonna put the guard down. It kind of like wants to pull your work up too at the same time. What if I don't like it? <laughs> Are you gonna be mad, Blake, if I don't like this and I just go straight back to the bandsaw and you never see this again? I feel like refunding you. Maybe I just need some adjusting. What is going on? Do I have to slow this down? No, it's still, still really jumpy and weird. Um. Okay, I feel like I adjusted the guard just perfect and it's holding it down correctly now. Learning curve. Okay, this feels bouncy as heck. Like this is just bouncing everywhere. Why does it smell weird? I don't know what I'm smelling, but something smells weird. Maybe it's the new electronics of this machine getting worked in, I don't know. You know, I could see how if you didn't have a bandsaw, you'd appreciate having this. I just really appreciate my bandsaw after using this. What the heck? It shouldn't be sounding and doing that, right? Like that shouldn't do that. Correct? Correct. That shouldn't do that. But it does and it makes it kind of hard. <laughs> what in the world? It's just like... If you want to send me a tool that I can criticize, P.O. Box is in the description. You can send me whatever you want. Most important feature of the build, you're gonna establish the bulbousness off the back right away. Not gonna cut very deep here. But this cut's gonna help a lot just with sheer material removalness. Sheer, what a word. It's a strange word, sheer. Boy, that's dull. It just skipped right off of that Tupelo wood. Man, I've been thinking too much about how I just used the word sheer and trying to make sense of it. I think it pertains to the way people say like cut and dry, that's like literal, literally. It's just a less douchey way of saying literally. That's what it is, literally. Boop. There we go, that's one side done. You can see a couple spots where I cut into the bottom part, but that'll get covered over with polyurethane and sanding dust, so no big deal. Can you imagine a place where there's a community full of bait makers, official bait makers. There's all the knowledge and information you could possibly need to make your own wooden fishing lures. There's access to every single template I make. It's got tools and supplies option lists. It's got PDFs with every step. I mean, it's got a bonus of how to take impactful photos of your baits after you make them. It's got a lot. I've been hung up on this swim bait video that I've been making for it for months now. I'm trying to like only add like the crispiest, most ideal content to this course. That's almost released. Something I'm constantly adding to. One-time payment, you have lifetime access. Wanted to let you know, this is a soft plastic video, but this course is all about how to make wooden baits, so. The Fish With Your Masterpiece lure making course. Go check it out, link in description. Back to the bulbousness. Just trying to make sure that anal fin is very straight. Wouldn't want a crooked one of those. 
I'm going to have to break out the Dremel and separate those two pelvic fins. That's what those are called. What kind of fish is this? I didn't even think once about that. What fish am I making? Therefore, probably no fun facts. I'm sorry. I'm never actually sorry when I say sorry on camera. Sorry. <laughs> Savage. That's what we're using. I think if I was to actually ever be sorry on camera, there would be a designated, like, apology. I don't think anybody's ever sorry when they just passingly say sorry. Do you? I don't. Take your sorry and shove it. Those got nice and thin and symmetrical and even. Missed a spot. The heck? Pop those eye sockets in there real quick. I've been carving a bit. It's coming to shape. It's looking really good. That's looking interesting. I've had thoughts about this. Keeping it squared off, potentially. Probably won't happen, but I had the thought. Thought I'd share. I'm just gonna keep carving. We'll go with something eventually. Do you guys watch weather events, even though you don't live where the weather event's happening? I do. There's some crazy tornadic activity about to happen. I got it on the TV back there. Let me know if that's a thing you do. Comment, like, and subscribe. <laughs> I should say that too. This is what's happening here. Bit of a flurry. Why, God? So uh, hopefully that clears up by the time we want to get that in the water. Uh oh, I'm carving scales. I just doubled the duration of this build. Never a decision I take lightly, but it's gonna make this look better. So fine, scales it is. One bait making eternity later. And I'm still carving scales. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna use this bit to make the little spot where the jig head goes in the top of the head. Okay, that's looking about right. Still don't know what fish this is, we'll see. Maybe I'll pour it a certain way and it'll seem like a fish. Look at that hole in its head. That looks weird. Time to seal the wood. Oh, this kind of feels like it's dry. It is. You know what, I'm not gonna put that on this lure. I gotta go get a new can. What a bummer. Okay, that literally took a couple of hours because I took the kids with me. But I'm back. Just to dip and dip, just to dip dip. Got two cans, back up. to make a mold. That was the chair, I didn't fart. Here we go. Uh, this is probably six ounces. 6.5, that'll work. 0. 0.68, oops, oh well. Gonna stir this up, not even gonna vacuum it and pour it in the mold box. 
There's my little mold box. Got a nice long skinny one for this. I'll show you how nice the master turned out after I mold it. <laughs> Did not feel the need to be chronological today. This is high strength three again. I don't know if you remember or even watched the video, but I had some troubles with this before. Was it the dingleberry or? I think it was the sea monkey. And now I'm starting to think that all of those troubles only came from mixing too much at once. Oh, I just realized. There's that huge dent in the forehead of this bait that I want to pour first and tilt the mold around. We gotta work with that a little bit. I'll just put a glob there and do some of this. Just straight up hold it vertically. Straight up and down, straight up, bro. And pour the rest. No mold release, no vacuuming. I say that as if it's cool or something. It's like a new trend, minimalistic mold making here. Dude, this is setting up hardcore. Do you see this? I hope those bubbles come out. Maybe I just have a really intense activator catalyst. It's like Dairy Queen. You can hold it upside down for a second right after you pour. It's like bubble gum flavored blizzard. I'm kind of concerned of how well that's gonna even turn out. That got thick fast. Let's just cut straight to that. It's the next day. Peel this thing out. Oh, it's in there good. Ooh, that didn't sound good. There we go. So that loud snapping noise was the tail completely breaking off at the thinnest part. But who cares when you have the mold? That looks smooth. I can tell there's a little air bubble at the top of the socket where the jig head's gonna go into, but that shouldn't matter that much. It's pretty small. I'm gonna pinch off the flashing and do the first pour in a solid color and look for imperfections. Pretty clean. All right, we're gonna pour it dingleberry color first. No mold tilting or anything, just a straight pour in. See how it turns out. Hopefully it does turn out perfect and I don't have to finagle it at all. Sea mold, I had it sitting on some aluminum. It actually does help. It cools off the silicone pretty good and sucks the heat out of the mold after you pour. What do we got? Oh, it's bubblicious in a bad way. There are some air cavities up in the head. I can still fish with this, but that's not ideal. Let's try that again. I'll have to give it one of these, you know? mold upright, pour straight down into the head, and then tilt it back and finish it. Yeah. Not so bubbly in the head. If this was a hot aluminum mold, wouldn't even be an issue, but it's a cold silicone. Nice and purple, with the big old dark glob back there. Awesome scale pattern. Let's see what it's like on a jig head. Hopefully it does something. Gonna use a tube jig, going for lots of flutter and flap. <laughs> that really dented in the head. What the heck? I might resort to just sticking that jig straight through the nose, I don't know. That look, almost dropped it right in the cup of Plastisol. That makes the head look kind of strange. Huh, maybe the plastic was really soft still and it just dented it. Well, let's go see what it looks like in the water. Chelsea bought flowers, big old bush, to plant in the front yard. So, right now, it's nothing. It does nothing at all. It floats down on its side. Yeah. That's not an acceptable action. Because it wants to flip upside down on the sink, it just, it won't run in any sort of way. Let's put a different jig on. Okay, quarter ounce ball jig head, straight through the nose. This should at least get it to run straight up and down, and then we can see if we can get action out of the tail. Oh yeah. The tail wants to flutter off of that first jerk. And then it kind of hydrodynamics out and it doesn't flutter anymore. But off of that first jerk, it does a kicky poo. Okay, that looks like a dying fish. That'll do. Hi, Dad. Hey, Roz. Not super special or anything, but that'll do. Yeah, I actually think a bait with not a ton of action is gonna be pretty practical this time of the year. I'm not concerned that it doesn't kick like a machine gun, you know? I think I'm gonna be doing stuff with the Molten Core and the Triton 8-bit Bates colors. Siren Scales, it's the new stuff. 
It's uh, really flaky in a good way. Like those are pretty large flakes floating around in there. Doing a lot of reflectivity. It's just shifty as heck. One more nuking and we're gonna pour belly that color. And we're gonna give him something to hit in the back, a chartreuse tail. Chartreuse tail and then immediately with the shifty color coming right up to it. Right over it. Right away. I don't know if that anal fin poured very well, but for the last color, I'm gonna add something darker to this. One drop of something blue, that's what I want. I shut the lid and it gave it an extra splat. Two more drops. Three more drops in a splat, actually. I'm gonna do a heat gun thing. I'm gonna tilt the mold, pour the, the blue, tilt it back, and pour it flat. All right, we got it hot in there. Absolute fire, pour quick. Get up there, pour the rest. Butter knife, get the butter knife. That's gonna be a very translucent bait with a chartreuse tail. A slight tint of blue on the top. You know, three drops and a splat. Chip, chip. Not bad. I really should have vacuumed because those bubbles are quite visible throughout that. I think I'm just gonna darken this color up a tad with something like gray or black and try to pour the same thing again, just one color in the body up here. Vacuumed plastic, same process as before. Ooh, it's, it's a little uh, sloppy. Not bad. That's a lot more clear. Holy smokes, I already got a leader on here. It's a miracle. All right, we're gonna pull out the double-headed one. Look like conjoined twins. I think that's a 12-pound leader. I'm gonna have to refrain from being a bass master today. There's a few people here today. I think that's a good sign. This place is kind of snagville. Whoa, that hollow shift powder is mesmerizing. Well, for some reason, I haven't caught a really large fish yet. Huh, how strange. Oh shoot, that was a bite. That was a chance right there. They liked it moving. We had a bite. Best one yet, potentially. Maybe I need to do a chartreuse lateral line down the whole center. It's just missing something, you know? Probably that chartreuse lateral line. I burnt a cup. That one had the hollow shift in it, so I gotta make a new one. That's just an opportunity to use a different color. Woohoo! All right, on the top color, we got some of that and some of that mixed up nicely together. It looks absolutely killer in the cup. Here we go. Ooh, the chartreuse lateral line actually turned out. I was kind of scared of, scared for it for a bit. I didn't know if it bled into the belly color. There's the best one yet. That lateral line's actually straight too, wow. Thought there might be like a bit of a dip and an issue with it going back to the bulge back there, but nope, that looks 
fantastic. I'm gonna put an eye on that and go get another thumbnail. <laughs> no cold cracking, mm. no bubbles. That's a smooth color transition. And that's a good one to end the pours on. I've already been out and attempted to catch a fish once for hours at that dam. I had a fish come up and fold the bait and cover the hook point and I pulled it out of that fish's mouth. There was a trick, 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 trick. It's a good one. Let's try again somewhere else. That's gonna be hard not to throw. Dang old three inch prey bait. So that's a water treatment plant. And I think in the news the other day, it said it dumped a bunch of poop into the river just recently. Maybe the fish like that, I don't know. Let's find out. We did establish that fish like dingleberries. Boy, that looks pretty darn good. That looks like a derpy sexy shad right there. The bulbous tailed derpy sexy shad. I finally got a fish. It's been like two hours. Oh. Didn't need the net. So, you know, it's kind of a mixture between the bait that I made sucks and the three inch prey baits are awesome. So we figured out the bait that I made sucks. It's official. Be free. Bob Saget. That was the chair again. Before I even made the bait for this video, I went out and secured some bonus fishing. Thank goodness. That preemptively redeemed myself. There's not much to say about this bait. You know what, I'm gonna leave it in the bag over there and not even show you anymore. Forget this bait. It's like every year around this time of the year, I think, wouldn't it be amazing to have this like bait fish profile, finesse style thing, because the fish are slow and I'll finesse them to bite and it just, it never works. Hey Chip, can I just, can I just shoot this last little part of this video, please? Anyway, probably never gonna try to make a bait like this again. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe. On to the bonus fishing. See if they want to stickle for a second. I might have snagged that fish. I didn't feel a bite at all. Staying down really good though. <laughs> That's a big one. Oh my goodness, we got a doozy right here. There's a notch or a nick in this line somewhere. I think it's in the spool right now. Kind of nerve wracking. Look how big this one is. Are you green still? That's my PB. Smallmouth buffalo. What a monster. Oh. I can't give you a very good perspective, but it's official. Smallmouth buffalo like the shtickle, be free. <laughs> Something tiny. Might be a walleye. It's fighting like one.
a walleye. We did it. I don't think that's 15. That was just on a three inch prey bait. Nice. Be free.